welcome back to the book of Exodus, we're at chapter 32, and today we're going to take verses 19 and 20. Let's read them. It came about as soon as Moses came near the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger burned, and he threw the tablets from his hands and shattered them at the foot of the mountain. He took the calf which they had made and burned it with fire and ground it to powder and scattered it over the surface of the water and made the sons of Israel drink it. All right, so Moses comes down and Moses takes charge. So he's heard this, he's been told already some of this by God, but now he actually walks into the camp and he sees it. Now from the description that we've just read, we see that from the outskirts of the camp, as Moses is entering the camp, he can already see where the golden calf is. That's apparently very prominent there, and he can see the people gathered around, and he can see the golden calf. Maybe it's glinting there in uh, sunshine or something, I don't know. But Moses sees the golden calf. So this is so prominent that anybody outside the camp could see it. Uh, remember that the design that God has been give, giving Moses for the sanctuary makes the sanctuary system the center of the camp. They would be set up in a certain way, all 12 tribes around this. This would be in the center with the tabernacle, the sanctuary building in the very center, the altar for the offering and all that at the very center of the camp. But now what we have is we have this very prominent fake idol in the place, perhaps where the uh, sanctuary would have been set up. So this is, uh, it hasn't been set up yet. But anyway, it's a very striking contrast between God's system that gets rid of sin and gives forgiveness and this, which is just, just pure, you know, uh, candy bars, rock and roll, sex, you know, whatever they were doing there that was just plain full crazy. Uh, they rose up to play, and so they're playing, and they're doing it at the foot of the mountain of the holy being, God, God the Father, God J Jesus, God the Holy Spirit. And so, yeah, this is the situation that Moses walks in on, and he's going to take charge now. What does he do? You know, I think that Moses probably had the one of those, you know, they call it the preaching voice. He must have been very able as he's coming down to the audio, the audio as he's coming down into the camp. He must have very loudly and given his presence, made his presence known. You know, oh, we didn't know what happened to Moses. Well, here he is. And uh, he returns. He's got the Ten Commandments. He's been carrying that. And he, in the sight of all the camp, he must have been loud and said some loud things. And he takes the Ten Commandments and he throws them down and shatters them there at the foot of the mountain. And we say, well, you have, why would you take something that God made and then throw it down and break it? Well, look, the people had already broken the covenant. So this was kind of a symbolic act. Uh, when Moses throws down the Ten Commandments, he's simply, in, in representation, he's showing that the people have, have broken the covenant. And so both tablets are broken, there's pieces, and the, the agreement, you know, that they've, they've, they've gone against God, right in his face, right in his presence. Moses throws it down at the foot of the mountain. They gathered, remember, at the foot of the mountain. They heard the Ten Commandments spoken by God, and now here comes the Ten. They're thrown down and broken to pieces. So no, I don't believe this was Moses having a, you know, a bad hair day. I don't believe this was Moses being un unreasonable or angry. Perhaps even God's Spirit led Moses to throw those tablets down to symbolically indicate or by an, 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 kind of an enacted prophecy again, showing that they have broken his covenant. So the covenant is moot at this point, just pfft. So that's what we have as Moses enters the camp. So now Moses makes a beeline for the idol, he grabs it, he takes it, and he's gonna burn it in the fire. There must've been a big bonfire going there. Moses takes the idol and he throws it in the bonfire and all the ashes and everything get ground up later, because remember, it was probably made of metal, gold on top of wood, and he's going to take that, and that then he forces the people to drink it. And we understand from previous texts, there was a brook, a stream running down off of the mountain, and perhaps he mixed it in there, and then that would be in their drinking water. You might remember another part in the Bible where a woman was accused of an adulterous act. She was forced to drink this liquidy substance, and in the end, it would be shown whether she was or was not adulterous. It's kind of an interesting parallel to that. And you know, every time you have something happening there uh, in this line, this has to always to do with adultery. And what has happened here is that God's people have committed effectively adultery by worshiping the idol instead of the God who delivered them. So they're basically accused, it's interesting, the parallels here showing this kind of them, they're in an adulterous situation. And I think we see that by this 
part of their reaction that, that they have to drink that substance. All right, we're gonna just leave it there and say some more tomorrow morning. Thank you.